Uh, yeah, hi, my name is Dimi. Uh, yeah, Dimitri, nobody can pronounce Dimitri. Uh, yeah, I'm a PhD student at the University of Bremen from Germany, and this is joint work together with my colleagues Peter, uh, Felix, Reiner, and Johannes. And um, yes, and as they all are climbers and I'm not, uh, they are currently in the um, climbing gym, and I'm here presenting the talk on the role of physical props in climbing environments. So, um, fear of falling is a, a pretty common phenomenon in sports climbing, and um, it hinders climbers um, uh, since it affects their, um, uh, their nervous system and uh, affects their, their movement and impairs them in their performance. So, overcoming fear of falling is, is, uh, is essential for, for professional climbers. And traditionally, uh, uh, climbers train their fear of falling um, by um, uh, habituation in, in first sense. And this, this approach resembles from, uh, from exposure therapy, from psychology, or psych or psychotherapy. Um, as we look in our field, uh, climbing has received much attention in the recent years, and for example, we see cliffhanger, AR, or augmented climbing, or wenger, and these are, uh, are all setups that use some form of augmented reality or uh, augmentation of the climbing wall in combination with some tracking devices to provide uh, extensive training environments for climbing. So in our work, we employ uh, some of these technological solutions to contribute a more, to a more general question on how we are suited for treatment in specific situations, and in this case, uh, climbing. Um, more particular, our work is mostly related to some quite early work on immersion and presence in VR, and also on work on fear of falling from sports psychology. And on the left side, you see the pit experiment. Um, and Meehan conducted three, three studies um, where he looked at different aspects um, that influenced the, the presence in VR. And one of the experiments was the passive haptics experiment, where the subjects um, moved toward, towards a virtual cliff. And the manipulation was whether the subjects had a a plywood ledge uh, next to the cliff. And what he found is that the plywood ledge uh, has a significant influ influence on the, on the, on the uh, sense of, um, of height. And the other experiment by, by Pipers, or there, there's, a, there's a line of experiments, what they did actually, is they, um, they did traversal climbing um, on dif different levels of height, and they they looked at how the different height affects the, uh, the fear of falling. And what they found is that with the, um, with the greater height, the fear of falling uh, and the anxiety is also raising. So in our experiment, um, we conduct, um, our experiment co consists of three conditions at three different levels of realism. And uh, for a baseline, I think I have to click here. For the baseline, we used uh, traversal climbing in reality at a 10 meter height. So these, the subjects were at a, um, on the real climbing wall and traversed um, uh, a horizontal route. And the, in the second uh, condition, the subject, uh, sorry, uh, the subjects were 30, 30 centimeters above the ground. Uh, but at a virtual height uh, of 10 meters. So they perform traversal climbing in virtual reality uh, while also climbing on the real world. Um, and the, the last condition was a purely virtual solution where the, uh, where the subjects were standing on the ground and were climbing purely virtually uh, only using controllers. Uh, sorry. Um, 
So our, our study focuses on levels of immersions provided through different levels, uh, through different uh, degrees of physical interaction, and we assume that simple passive props significantly improve the, the sense of presence in virtual reality as, uh, as well as the raise anxiety uh, due to the stronger sense of realism. Um, yeah, here again are three conditions. Um, before we dive deeper into the study, our implementation, so we used, uh, we used the Vive VR system uh, with, a, uh, with a leap motion attached to the HMD for, uh, to visu visualize hands in VR. Um, and also we attached um, the Vive markers on the, on the heels for foot tracking since fo uh, uh, footwork is very essential in, in climbing. Um, to, to match the, uh, the virtual wall and the, and the real physical wall, we also used the, um, the Vive trackers with the, in a combination with a semi-automated uh, calibration approach where we place the, the markers on the wall and then um, you use these positions to calibrate, uh, to, to fit uh, the, uh, the virtual world to the real world. Um, this, the study was conducted in the local climbing gym and it fulfills the specifications of the lane of an international federation sport climbing wall. Uh, the traversal road is angled at five degrees and is three meters long. Um, so the, the road has a difficulty of four plus on the UIAA uh, scale, which is suitable for beginners. And by letting our participants climbing horizontally on the, on the horizontal road, um, we, maintain, we maintained all conditions uh, comparable, and also our, uh, our study setup is similar to the work by Piper that I just showed. Um, yeah, and also to make the routes comparable, we designed our, our holes of plywood, uh, of wood, uh, so we could create identical roads for, for uh, all conditions. Uh, for our measurements, or for our physiological measurements, we, um, we use heart rate and skin conductivity as, uh, as our main signals, and um, heart rate variability was our main, um, uh, main trigger for, for anxiety, or main signal for anxiety. Um, the heart rate uh, we measured using an ECG and also a chest strap to be uh, more precise on that and also uh, the chest straps um, seems to be less uh, affected by, uh, by movement. Um, now for subjective measurements, uh, we use the uh, IPQ for, 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 uh, for presence uh, on these uh, subscales of uh, spatial presence involvement and experience realism. Uh, the, and since heart rate and respiration rates are also dependent on physical activity, um, we, uh, we can only, only compare um, the conditions when the, when the physical activity is similar, uh, otherwise the signals would attribute, uh, we cannot attribute the signals to, to anxiety, and uh, therefore we also uh, provided a questionnaire for rating of perceived exertion. Um, yeah, and also, also we, we measure, measured severity of acrophobia using the virtual height intolerance and state uh, trait anxiety uh, in, uh, inventory to meter anxiety or trait anxiety. Um, so the procedure was um, briefing and putting on the harness and also with, um, fitting the electrodes and, and while the the subjects were um, uh, were fitting out, uh, filling out the upfront questionnaires. Uh, we measured the baseline signals for um, uh, for our physiological measurements, and then in randomized order, uh, the subject had um, first to throw a ball, uh, look down, um, and re read numbers on, on the ground where the, where the ball. Hit, uh, hit the ground, um, 
we use it to, to make sure that the sub subjects were uh, aware of the, of the height they were exposed to. Then um, next they had to traverse the route, um, uh, do, um, again look down, um, re read on the numbers on the ground again, and traverse back. And after each condition, then they had to answer the questionnaires. So um, 28 subjects part uh, volunteered to par participate in our study, and most of them were, uh, were uh, customers of the, of the climbing gym that, where the experiment took place. And most, most of them were experienced climber climbers uh, climbing about, and about three quarters of them climb at least once a week. Uh, there were no extraordinary tendencies to respond to um, situation perceived as threatening, uh, th threatening um, to an elevation in state anxiety, and also none of the none of the users gave indications to suffer from acrophobia. So um, surprisingly, we found uh, differences in the durations between the con <coughs> between the conditions indicating that there are differences in performance, especially in between uh, the real condition and the props condition. For the physical exertion, we, again, we measured, um, uh, we me we measured heart rate using ECG and, and the chest strap. Um, there are many, uh, many combinations are significantly different, but most importantly for, for us, the real and the props conditions aren't significantly different, indicating that we, that we can compare the conditions since they are similarly physically exerting. Uh, on subjective, um, subjectively, there's, uh, there is a significant difference between the props and the real condition, uh, which is quite surprising to us, um, and uh, yeah, I'll discuss it later. Uh, on anxiety, we couldn't find any significant differences uh, between the real and the props condition uh, on, the, on the physiological levels. However, on the anxiety thermometers, uh, there was a difference between the props and the controller condition, condition indicating that, uh, that using props uh, raises the anxiety while climbing. For, for presence, uh, the only significant difference between the props and the controller condition was on the, on the real subs, or realness subscale, uh, indicating that, uh, that the, the, the props enhance the sense of realism. And also the IPQ offers a dat database from multiple studies um, which we use then as a, as a baseline to see how our, uh, our presence scores are, um, are related to, to other studies and um, on all scales uh, our results are above, above the average but only on spatial awareness and realness the, the scores were significantly different. And qualitative results here I picked just a few. Uh, the oral feedback was mainly positive and reflected the, the relatively high presence score that we received. However, the, we also received a minor number of comments regarding tracking issues and trust in our setup. So to conclude, how do passive uh, physical props affect the sense of realism in virtual environments? And we can say subjectively, Yes, there uh, is definitely um, an effect. So uh, physical props positively affect um, the sense of presence and also on anxiety. But physiologically, the results are ambiguous and not so clear. So um, So we, we conclude that physical props substantially increase the degrees of realism and significantly strength, strengthen the, uh, this, uh, the, uh, the experience presence. And we argue that, uh, that full body interaction will, 
that use simple passive props uh, can be used as a safe and effective uh, environment for training, and particularly in this case for climbing. Yeah, and I conclude my talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have time for a couple of questions. Um, there is a microphone, so please just raise your hand if you have a question, and we will distribute it to you. And also, please state your name and affiliation. So there is one question in the front. Florian Dibe, Dave K. Hello. Nice work. Uh, I have one question. So there is a really difference between top rope climbing and lead climbing uh, in terms of fear of falling. And so, do you think there might be a similar effect uh, in this study? Because there could be a, a, the same thing. I know that I do not really fall that much compared to uh, to the uh, yeah to a condition where you kind of climb up the wall uh, in top rope or even in lead climbing in VR, and this might have some effect. Um, sorry, I didn't get the question. So you, you mean so, you mean that 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 the 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 effect that we were traversing and not mm -hmm. climbing up yeah. affects the the results? Um, yes, this is probably a limitation of our study because um, this is not a fully realistic setup in the, in that sense. But we had to make our conditions comparable somehow. Otherwise, if, 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 uh, if they were climbing upwards, then, then the results probably would mess up completely. But pro probably this would look differently. Uh, Yen Tzu Chen, Philips Research. Um, first of all, I actually really like this kind of com combining physical things with, uh, with this kind of simulations. Uh, what I was wondering about is actually most of the people you tested with were having experience with climbing. Um, to what extent does the amount of experience people have affect this uh, kind of like the, the fear that people have? Um, so fear of falling is something that most of us have and also experienced climbers have. And this is not something that goes away, actually, but you train to deal with it. So, uh, so the physiological reactions are tend to be there, so they might, might be a bit lower because you're more self-controlled probably, but uh, they tend to be there. Um, and the, the less experienced you are, um, then the, the stronger the effects would be. So if, if, if we had, for example, acrophobia patients, then the, then the graphs would probably rise even more. Thank you. Um, so do you think that there is a ceiling effect for height? So is there a difference if you would do the same test for one meter, 10 meter, 100 meters, 1,000 meters in, in kind of to the ground? Um, I think yes. So first, first of all, physiologically, there are limits. So uh, our skin can produce that much um, uh, sweat, for example, or our heart rate can be only that high. Um, That's right. You can leave the notebook. Here. Ah, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, yeah. So there, there is definitely a physiological ceiling effect, and the other thing is um, we tend to uh, measure things more relatively than absolutely. Okay. So if if we have a reference point, then we probably wouldn't have a ceiling effect, but if it, on an absolute scale, it will probably then 